Nice job, Boba. Those ice creams look great, but this website even better. There's no way someone like me would be able to recreate that, so let's try it anyways. Recreating the entire website would take me ages, so I'll need to pick what I'm going to recre... Wait, what was that? Okay, this looks awesome. I have no idea where to start, but I need an HTML file for sure. Create a section element for the entire slider and a div for each item. Give it some text, a heading, two images, and... Oh, that's all. Now what topic could I make this slider about? Hmm, maybe activities? I love my creativity. Now it seems like each ice cream element fills about half the size of the screen and the previous and next one are half visible on the edges. But for those, you don't see the entire element, just the ice cream picture. The rest fades in when you hover over them at different speeds from different angles. But how? And how will I implement this background if I never created a curve before? Uh, Alright, let's take a step back and break this down. I see three main challenges here. The sliding itself, the animated position and opacity, and the wobbly bubbly background transition. Let's start at the start. I know about this library for sliders, but I feel creative today, so let's only use the holy trinity of web development. Since we want to slide between different activities, I'll add a few extra, each with its own content. Currently everything is stacked below each other, but Flexbox should fix that. We mentioned earlier that the size of one activity should be 50%, but why are the images still overlapping then? I guess images don't like boundaries. So let's give both the images a fixed width based on the view width, which will keep the website responsive. Keep in mind though, that this is not the best way to make your website responsive, but adding full mobile support would add another few minutes to this video. But wait, if the width of an activity is 50%, then why can I see the third activity? Hmm. It seems that display flex is trying to shrink everything in the flex box, but we don't want it to shrink, so let's set the flex property so it won't grow, won't shrink, and give it an initial width of 50%. But somehow I can still see the edge. Ah, that evil body margin. Next, overlap the images in the center. Uh, wait, not all the images, I meant relative to its own activity. And make the section the full height of the screen. Wait, why does it add a scroll bar for an element which is exactly 100% of the view height? Is it because of this little guy? Hmm, apparently it is. Well, we didn't want him anyways. Now add some last tweaks for the font, the text alignment, font size and some other font styling and give each section its own text color and background color. Or no, we would add that in the third challenge. The images that I'm using are unequally sized, so I'm slightly adapting the size and position. And you might have noticed that I'm using the data item attribute instead of a class as the selector. A class would have made more sense here, but I can look in the future. And I feel like we need this in our third challenge. Now the result should look something like the... Oh, whoops. Don't forget to add our font and set the data item attribute for every activity. Hmm, still quite some overlapping content. That's because we're not hiding the overflown content and it's actually not a problem anymore once we fix challenge 2 because then there will only be one visible activity at a time anyways. But this text belongs at the top, so I'll add a div around the text elements for that. Now how shall I implement navigation between the activities? The first image needs to appear in the center, so give the whole section an offset of 25%. Implementing dragging is not that interesting to watch, so I'll just add clicking support. So when an activity gets clicked, we want it to move to that activity. But how do we calculate that? Well, let's first add the initial offset of 25% and then add 50% for each item selected. Hmm, and we can use the index of the array for that because query selector all guarantees the order to be the same as the items in the document. Now add this new script to the end of your body and that's all. Oh, we're moving in the wrong direction here, so let's invert this. Now the user needs to understand that this slider is clickable and apparently this little hand gets that job done. Now that's one challenge out of the way, two more to go. Let's start with making this clicking experience a little smoother. Since we're updating the transform on the activity section, maybe we should add a transition for that? Oh, well, that was easy. And what if we could keep track of the current active activity? Then we could hide the others, except for the ice cream or item image in our case. We would have to make the first activity the default active one first. And whenever an activity gets clicked, we should make that the new active activity. So if we now give the inner divs a context class, we can hide that by default and show it only for the active activity. Now, since everything needs to be smooth, we probably need a transition for the opacity as well. Hmm, and apparently that just works. Oh, but the scene image is not centered anymore though. And that's because the parent of this image needs to be relatively positioned. But we're still missing the text and image transitions though. 
The direction seems to differ depending on the size that you're sliding from, but I found a neat trick for that. By default, we'll add a negative translate on the x-axis, but as soon as we arrive at the active activity, we set it to zero. Then for all the activities after the active one, we set a positive translate value, and to make it smooth, make sure to add the transform transition as well. And that's all, which means that we need no JavaScript at all for this. And if we would repeat that same pattern for the scene image, it would slide in even faster. But there's still something slightly off. UI is all about subtle details and in this case you can find those with the animation tab in Chrome. Because if you replay the animation on a very low speed, you'll see that the new active activity should be displayed only once the previous one almost disappeared. I guess a 300 milliseconds delay will do the job here since the fade out animation takes 400 milliseconds. And you'll see the text now starts appearing as soon as the old text is almost gone, with the image moving in slightly faster. Nice, challenge 2 completed. Wobbly bobbly background time. Now I have never created an SVG myself before, so let's do a quick search here. Harmonious visuals. Hmm. Well, that sounds interesting. Well, this is not a type of wave we want, but maybe... Oh, look at that. Start designing. Different shapes, colors, nice. Hmm, what size should I give it? I guess 16 by 9 makes sense for desktop, but not for mobile. Ah well, I can scale an SVG anyways. It needs to be able to cover the entire screen, so let's fill the balance all the way. Oh, but that only fills it halfway. Well, in that case, let's double the height to 1080 and add some additional margin for the wobbly area because otherwise we'll still see parts of the background. I'm going to pick four of these SVGs with different colors and no background color. Save those and copy the content to a new div with a background class in the body. Now we want those SVGs to always cover the entire width of the screen and to be at least about two and a half times the height of the screen because of the blank area, the waves and the solid area. Make them absolutely positioned so they will all position on the left top of our screen and... Hmm, why is nothing appearing? Ah, we're currently seeing the top part of the SVG, which is transparent. So that probably means that we can transform it upwards to see it. Oh, look at that. And if my calculations are correct, I would now be able to make the SVG cover the entire screen and... Shoot. Hmm, what did I do wrong? Oh, maybe I should remove the default width and height set on the SVG itself. And while we're at it, let's also remove those IDs since we don't need them anyways. And now if we move it up 50% for the transparent part and an additional 10% to hide the waves, the screen will be completely covered. But how do we change the current active background? Well, remember we added the data item attribute to our activities? Let's now do something similar for the waves so that in our JavaScript we can find the corresponding wave. And it turns out that if you call append child on a node while the past element already exists, that it will remove that existing element and append it at the end. Which is exactly what we want here, because then it will be displayed over the other waves. Now look at that. Let's animate it now by selecting the last wave and move only that one upwards. And... Oh shoot. You cannot animate this wave because we just removed and replaced this element. So it gets this transform applied right from the start. Okay, but there must be a way, right? I heard animations play by default when an element is just created, so maybe that works? From position 0 to minus 60% and... Whoa! Hey, where did it go? Ah, I guess we need to tell the animation to stick to the end result instead of resetting. And I thought we removed this vertical scroll bar. Oh, the background is now overflowing. Well, let's just hide any overflowing content then. I guess it would be better to wrap it in a container div, but I'll wrap it up here and leave that up to you. And now that step 3 is finished, it's time to... No, but for real. When you get the opportunity to develop something awesome like this, it can be quite overwhelming at first. But don't think you won't be able to do it. Take your time to look at every single detail and then, step by step, approach the development process and nail it. And are you stuck? Don't worry. Everyone is, once in a while. In fact, recreating the space took me hours. But this thinking process eventually gets me there.